Hello, all right. So tonight we are going to talk about sleeping with sciatica. I am Dr. Heather Moore, owner of Total Performance Physical Therapy. Um, so one of the things that honestly makes back pain so much worse is the inability to sleep. And if you suffer from any sort of back pain, you know what I'm talking about. You roll around all night, you toss, you turn, uh, you can't sleep. And all of that tossing and turning, not being able to get settled, makes a huge difference. Uh, and it actually really aggravates your back pain. And I know you know that uh, when you wake up leery eyed and you know, you're, you're in pain, and that's part of the problem. Um, sciatica, sciatica just means you have pain going down the leg. Why do you have pain going down the leg? There's a nerve affected somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, that's where uh, getting a, a, a diagnosis outside of sciatica is extremely important. Sciatica is basically a garbage can term for pain going down the leg. So it could be trigger points, it could be piriformis syndrome, it could be a number of different things. So it's really important to understand why you have that diagnosis of sciatica. But sciatica is used very common. We see it all the time in here. We get scripts for it all the time in here. We get to figure out why it's happening. But when you have that pain going down your leg, it's really hard to sleep and it's really hard to get comfortable to sleep. So we're going to go through a few different ways that you can position yourself to sleep in order to eliminate that sciatica. One of the first things that you want to do outside of sleep, outside of anything, is move. All right, so uh, if you have a very sedentary job and you don't move a lot, you wanna make sure that you're starting to make some of those changes. The sleeping position that you assume is going to not matter whatsoever if you cannot make changes to your day, okay? So I know I suffered with this when I was pregnant. I was not able to get comfortable at night. I literally, like my legs would run. It was so painful, it was shooting down my leg and honestly it was because I become more sedentary when I was pregnant and I started to force myself to get up more um, as much as that sucked uh, I every 15 minutes I would just make an effort to get up and it actually I changed a little bit about, about the way how I slept but I was able to actually sleep better by also incorporating changes to your day. So don't think that you have sciatica and just changing how you sleep is going to make that much of a difference. If you sit for a living and you go to bed and everything's burning, you're gonna also need to change things that happen in your day. A whole other video, if you visit Total Performance Physical Therapy YouTube channel, we have a lot of videos on sciatica that you can look up, but just understand that maybe changing your sleeping ha habits, sleeping postures, may not always change your sciatica if you don't do, start to make a global change. Sciatica, no matter what the cause, you need to make sure that you are making that uh, universal change, that you're making things that are going to make it go away. There is no magic pill, there is no magic shot, steroids, injections, all that fun stuff. Work for a little while, but in order to actually make it go away, you have to make changes to your lifestyle, and whether that be a sedentary lifestyle, and again, those are things that you know we need to take a look at and investigate and figure out. But sleeping with sciatica. So it is really hard to sleep with sciatica. I know I've had it shot down my leg. I literally would like just lay in bed and my leg just would go like this forever, just trying to get it to stop tingling, to stop it from going numb. And sometimes it would just shoot pain. So what can you do? So how do you sleep first of all? So when you talk about a sleeping posture, you gotta look at how you sleep. Uh, let's say you're a back sleeper. So we're gonna talk about sleeping on your back. That's the best way you can sleep. It is on your back with your legs pop propped up. Why does this sometimes invoke more sciatica pain? Because what happens is when you lay down, a lot of people will just lay down like this. Or they'll put pillows under their knees and it's like this. So you haven't really done anything, honestly. So when you talk about putting pillows underneath your knees, which is a very uh, common thing to do, it's a universal fix for back pain. When you put those two pillows underneath your knees and you wind up still like this, you haven't done anything, really. The idea behind putting a pillow underneath your knee is that you raise your knees up to put your back in a flat position. So when we talk about putting something underneath our knees, 
It's got to be thick. It's got to be sturdy. It's got to be high. So now you can see there's been a change in my back. My back went from being arched to now being able to lay flat. It is an extremely common mistake with back pain sufferers, sciatica sufferers, when they go and they lay on their back because that's the best position to sleep in and they're told to do so, they don't make the correct change. They just throw some old pillows underneath their legs and because of the weight of those pillows, you're basically your legs go straight, your back gets curved and you see no difference and you wind up in a lot of pain. I promise you, if you are suffering from back pain or sciatica and you're laying like this, you are causing yourself more pain. This is not how you should lay. Two pillows under your knees, still the same thing. Not how you should lay. Not going to solve any of your problems. So make sure that when you put that pillow underneath your legs, that it is a sturdy pillow. They sell these on Amazon, okay? Make sure that your legs are up. Make sure that your spine, you can feel it up against the bed, and you won't feel the pillow go down at all. This is really hard styrofoam, so you're going to feel no give, basically, when you put your feet on this, and that's what you want. You want to position yourself in that, so that way, yes, you might turn in the middle of the night, and we'll get to that, but you want to make sure that your legs are elevated enough so that your spine is supported. It still may take you some time to fall asleep because, honestly, the worst thing for back pain and sciatica is, is static positions. It's staying in one position. Worst thing you can do. But it can, this will give you a little bit of relief. Now, let's say it doesn't give you relief. Let's say you've tried it. You're 15 minutes in. Your tears are coming down your eyes. If you get to that point during the night, before you fall asleep, while you fall asleep, whatever, you get to the point where you're like, I am ex in excruciating pain. One of the things that you want to do is you want to get up and you want to walk around or go to the bathroom. It's the last thing you want to do, but you need a reset. Nothing you do while you're laying in bed is going to correct that issue. So you need to get up out of bed just for five or 10 minutes, allow your body to reset. You've kinked something. You've done something while you're laying there. I know it sounds weird because you're like, I didn't do anything. I was just laying there. It's the stationary position that your body doesn't like. So if you wind up and you are just laying on your back and you can't fall asleep and tears are just streaming because the back pain is getting worse, get up and move. Take some of that pressure off your back. Get up and move and then come back and try the second position. The second position we're going to talk about is side lying. Super important when you're suffering from sciatica that you have a sideline pillow. Now, this you can put two pillows between your legs. Totally fine. This is just because we have a fancy one in the clinic. Um, I actually sleep with this pillow um, because what happens is when you go to sleep and you go to sleep on your side, you wind up with your hips in. Okay? You wind up with your legs together. You want your hip joints to be everything, the idea is everything's in neutral. So when you put the pillow between your knees, my legs stay straight, which then takes the pressure off my back. Again, this is a little bit exaggerated, but what happens is when your leg falls down and goes in, it pulls on your hip, which pulls on your back, which fires up your nerves. When you go to sleep, you want everything you can to be in neutral. So you're going to put a pillow in between your legs. Now, if you have wider hips like me, you might want to put a towel underneath your side right here. Because again, if I come down, I'm going to wind up with a crunch here. You want everything to be as straight as you can. Now, some of you are like, no way, I'm not doing all that before I go to sleep. That's ridiculous. I've never slept with a pillow underneath my side. I have wide hips and I've never slept with a pillow underneath my side. I can't do it. It does. It aggravates me more than it helps me. But I know some people who can't sleep with, who are unable to fall asleep without it. You want to picture your spine just like when it is standing up. It's nice and straight. You want it nice and straight when you go to sleep. So you can ask your partner to take a look. You can look in the mirror, whatever. But you want to do everything you can to keep that spine nice and straight. This all 
also means that if you've got wide shoulders, like I do, being an ex swimmer, my shoulders are huge. Um, I can't sleep with regular pillows. I have a massive side sleeping pillow because do you know how much room it takes to fill this gap? So you need to make sure that you're not like this. Again, you're pulling your spine in a different direction. You're pulling on your nerves in a different direction. So those of you who like down pillows, they're the worst things for you. And no, stacking two or three of them up is not the answer. So when you're sleeping on your side, you want to get a pillow that will cover this much area. So you are able, again, to sleep with your head in neutral. Nice and easy. All right? The side pillows are hard. I understand that. It's going to take some getting used to to sleep with a side pillow. You can get one at Kohl's for like 20, 30 bucks. That's where mine comes from. Don't buy one of these super expensive pillows. It's not worth the money. But when you buy a side sleeper pillow, it's going to be thick. You can buy different densities, but you, it's going to have to cover this area. So if you've got linebacker shoulders like I do, you've got to have a pillow that covers those linebacker shoulders. All right. You want to make sure everything is straight. So when you're on your side, you're not like this, all right? You are just wrenching your nerves right now, hurting your discs, basically doing everything you can. And you're not like this. Same thing. It's not rotation. Your spine needs to be straight. If you are suffering with sciatica and back pain, the number one thing you can do is keep your spine straight when you're sleeping. It's extremely hard to do. But at least if you set yourself up when you go to sleep, you'll fall asleep that way for a little bit. It is really important that you do that. The final way we're gonna go over is stomach sleeping. And I know people just went, because oh, I tell people to get off their stomach all the time. Stomach sleeping is terrible for you. However, and this is where you need to be diagnosed. So if you want a free consultation, come in, call 215-997-9898, and we will be happy to help you out. When there is a disc involvement that is causing some pain going down your leg, and I'm going to say right now, if you have an MRI that says you have a herniated disc, that doesn't mean that that's causing your sciatica. It's just the only thing that comes up on MRI that will say that it could be possibly causing your sciatica. 70% of all people have a herniated disc. Not everybody has sciatica. So don't think that just because, oh, you have a herniated disc, I'm, I should be sleeping on your stomach. You actually be doing more harm if you do that. But there are occasions where if you have a herniated disc, you actually can sleep on your stomach and get a little bit of relief. Now, this is a really extreme situation because you want to be in that more of your extension posture. So you will be able to do a little bit of something along these lines. Ideally, your face is in something that is a hole, okay? You have a pillow that has a hole in it. You don't really want to be like this. Why? Because you're rotating your spine. That is the only, that is only after you've been diagnosed and told to sleep that way by a professional. Don't sleep that way. It is horrible. And if you do it and you're like, I'm a, stomach, or I'm a stomach sleeper, get off your stomach. It absolutely causes you a tremendous amount of problems and could be causing your back pain and sciatica. So in very rare cases, in very extenuating circumstances, when told to, you can sleep on your stomach. I don't advise it. It is extremely hard. The number one thing you have to think about when you are trying to get to sleep with back pain and sciatica is get my spine straight. Figure out how to get your spine straight, and that's going to help you. That's going to help open up the muscles that may be affected, and that's going to help open up your spine, okay? But if you are having problems falling asleep because of sciatica, you definitely need help. It is not something to be ignored because that falling asleep is then going to affect everyday life, sitting, standing, all the other things that you want to do. So if you are having back pain or sciatica, and you want a free consultation, all you have to do is call our office at 215-997-9898, and we'd be happy to help. Thanks, and have a good night.